we continue our discussion on the minimum weight spanning tree problem in connection with linear programming. As before, we have a connected graph G with edge weights given by C. We assume that the edges are labeled E1 up to EM and the edge costs of E1 up to EM are in non-decreasing order. We have seen that this linear programming problem is a relaxation for the minimum weight spanning tree problem. In fact, this relaxation is exact. The way to show this is to find a spanning tree T in a dual solution such that the incidence vector of T and the dual solution together satisfy the complementary stagnus conditions. We won't go through all the details of the proof, but we'll see how the spanning tree and the dual solution are constructed. For the spanning tree, we simply take the tree returned by Kresko's algorithm. Let's now form the dual problem of this linear programming problem. So the dual problem is a maximization problem. And we are going to associate with these constraints the dual variables ya, the equality constraint with ye. Because the primal problem is a minimization problem, and these are less than or equal to constraints, the variables ya in the dual will be required to be non-positive. And ye will be free because it is associated with the equality constraint. Now for each edge E, we get a constraint in the dual. And we see that the coefficient of Ya is 1 whenever A contains the edge E. So we can write down this constraint. And of course, Ye is in this constraint because capital E contains all the edges. And since the primal variables are non-negative, this will be a less than equal to constraint. And the coefficient of xe in the objective function is ce. The objective function will be summed over all the a's that are non-empty in a proper subset of e of number of nodes minus kappa of a times ya plus the number of nodes minus 1 times ye. But since g is a connected graph, if we look at kappa of e, there must be 1. Recall that kappa of f denotes the number of components of the graph v, f. So we can rewrite this objective function as follows. We simply allow a to be equal to e. And we can also do something similar to this constraint here by removing y of e and allowing a to be e. So this is our dual problem. And remember that we have to construct a dual solution so that it together with the incidence factor of the spanning tree returned by Crustle's algorithm satisfy the complementary stagnus conditions. So here's the construction. This is our dual problem. And the way we construct the dual solution is given here. So for every set A, that is E1 up to EI, we let YA be the cos of EI minus the cos of EI plus 1. Because the cos of E1 up to EM are in non-decreasing order, this must be non-positive. And for the variable ye, we assign the cos of the edge em. And this is okay because ye is free. And everything else is zero. One can easily check that all these constraints are satisfied by this constructed y. And now let us look at an example illustrating this construction. So here, the edge ways are given by the numbers in red. And we have to assign non-zero values to Ya, where A is the set containing just E1, the set E1, E2, the set E1, E2, E3, and so on up to the set E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, which is the entire edge set for the graph. Y of E is easy. It simply takes the edge cost of E5, and that's 7. Let's go back to A equal to set E1. So it is the cost of E1 minus the cost of E2. So that's negative 2. 
and for a equal e1, e2, is the cos of e2 minus the cos of e3. So 3 minus 4, that's negative 1. The next one would be 4 minus 5, that's negative 1. And the next one is 5 minus 7, and that's negative 2. We are now going to work out the objective function value of this dual solution. And for that, we need to know cup of A. So if you take the edge E1, the graph with the full node set and just the edge E1, we have three components. So this is three. If we have E1, E2 as edges, we'll have two components. If we take E1, E2, E3, we have again two components. If we take E1, E2, E3, E4, we'll just have one component. Same for taking the entire edge set. And if we take a spanning tree returned by Kruskal's algorithm, we would have E1, E2, and E4. And the weight of this tree is 1 plus 3 plus 5, and that's 9. So let's work out the objective function value of this dual solution. So the number of nodes in the graph is 4. So we'll have 4 minus 3 times negative 2 plus 4 minus 2 times negative 1 plus 4 minus 2 times negative 1 plus 4 minus 1 times negative 2 plus 4 minus 1 times 7. And that works out to be negative 2 minus 2 minus 2 minus 6 plus 21. And that's 9, which is equal to the weight of the spanning tree. And so this shows that this tree is indeed of minimum weight. So we didn't have to know that Kruskal's algorithm returns a minimum weight spanning tree. These calculations here show that this tree is indeed a minimum weight spanning tree.